Hello and welcome to the first episode of the Man On podcast, hosted by me, Alex Mendlicott, and my very good friend, Andy Roberts. Hello, Mel. Hello, mate. How are we feeling? Very good. Thank you very much. Great. That's lovely stuff. So, basically, me and Andy have decided that we're going to do this podcast together. Uh, We're doing it through Zoom, through screens to each other, as we're in lockdown 3.0. But we've just decided we talk nonsense all week about the footy. Why not talk nonsense all week over a podcast? We talk about the footy, we'll talk about life, and most importantly, we're going to talk about our mental health and how we're feeling during this lockdown period. Um, absolutely. It's really important though, isn't it? Like, I think um, it's been really tough for a lot of people out there like through this lockdown, and I don't want people to tune into us and go, oh, it's all going to be doom and gloom. It absolutely isn't, and possibly we're two of the silliest human beings on this planet. But I thought it'd be a, we thought it'd be a really good way of us just saying, how are you, mate? <laughs> like, how are you feeling? Yeah, exactly, mate. Like you said, we are two very, very silly men. Uh, we like the daftest of things in life. Um, but why not use it as a platform to just talk about the struggles and the worries of day-to-day life in lockdown, but mm-hmm. also just to have a little laugh of each other, eh? Mm. Um, like, yeah, absolutely. So how have, you, how have you been coping with lockdown 3.0? Lockdown 3.0, and this time, it's personal. <laughs> a, gr- a great film. <laughs> um, it's, do you know what? Lockdown 1 was my favourite. Right, okay. I know that sounds awful, but like, as in, Lockdown 1, we were all kind of in the same boat. It was all kind of fresh and new. So we were all wondering what, you know, the fucking hell was going on. <laughs> yeah. Lockdown 2 was... Well, it was a poor man's lockdown, wasn't it? It wasn't really a full lockdown. No, nah, people venturing out for coffees. All and kinds. Walks. All kinds. Um, and then lockdown three. Lockdown three has been the toughest one for me. Yeah, it's, it feels strange, doesn't it? Because lockdown three, I think because we're looking at the outside world, we're seeing that we're in a particularly precarious position in this country. Um. And so lockdown three has felt a little bit more tense and obviously I'm furloughed at the moment. So I'm literally sat doing nothing. Hence the podcast. Hence the podcast indeed. <laughs> it's uh it feels strange. The the summer lockdown, which we you know, it's summer of twenty twenty. Oh yeah. Um the summer lockdown you could go outside, you could enjoy the sunshine, it you could go sunny, for a walk. Yeah. It was sunny. People it was seemed sunny and we could go outside and we could do what well we couldn't do whatever we wanted, but you could go out, enjoy the sun, all kinds. And like I particularly like where I was living on Prince well, I still live on Prince's Road, but I was living close to where there was like a guy who would just play reggae music all day. Yeah. And I genuinely felt like I was at a festival Mate, all day. I one of my Favourite moments of lockdown one was playing tennis in Prinny Park oh. with, with friend of the show, Thomas Galashin, um, whilst he wore full tennis attire. Yeah. Uh, he ate stuffed peppers with ricotta. Yeah, he brought antipasty, didn't he? He brought like, antipasty to Prinny Park and then weird, moaned though. about how little money he was getting on his dole. Oh, but he was getting an, an obscene amount of money. He was getting an obscene amount of money from university. I'm not saying tennis. everyone who, who, who gets that gets an obscene amount of money. But he did. He got a silly amount of money, yeah. mate. So but this is a, this is directly to him. <laughs> this. We know we know what you've been <laughs> up to. But uh, I'm a small business owner, as you know, Andy. So the first lockdown was a bit of a strange one for me. Yeah. In terms of um, everything was new, working out furlough, getting the staff sorted out, um, wondering what was going to happen to the business. Uh, so yeah, lockdown. One was a bit stressful, a bit more stressful than this time round because this time round, obviously, you've already gone through all the furlough stuff and things mm. like that. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's it is stressful being a small business owner and not really knowing what the future holds. Uh, but you've just got to keep a positive outset on things. <laughs> yeah, I think you've got to. You know, I think now's a, it's going to sound really like trite, but like now's a better time than any to try and maybe reinvent yourself maybe i have often thought that because like you know since i've been at home 
I don't know what I'm being doing. And you do get days where, and I imagine there's a lot of you out there that feel the same. You'll get days where you'll go, like, what the fucking hell am I going to do? Like, well, where, what 100%. direction do I go into? You know, like, we've both got degrees in drama. Yeah. So Nonsense. It, nonsense. Absolute nonsense. Um, it doesn't give us the skills no. to set up a podcast over no. Zoom, does but, it? But uh, we could show you, you know, an interpretive fourth wall. 100%. Yeah, you want you want any Shakespearean <laughs> monologue, and he's got it. So if you want to tweet us and send us a, a direct <laughs> message of any Shakespearean monologue that you want from Andy Roberts, I will perform it. Um, and if you say how you want me to perform it, I'll try that yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah. I within think, within I think retrospect, we should, I think we should just set him the task of just just one from Macbeth next week. I think. Oh God! Just one sh- sh- a short monologue. It's taken you. It's taken you six minutes to fuck me over. <laughs> <laughs> Unreal. <laughs> um, well, I think next week tune in for Macbeth live on Man on the Podcast. Anyway, and we haven't talked any football yet. Oh, and that's why we're here, isn't it? <clears throat> yeah. Talk a bit of silliness and football. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's get on to the first thing of the weekend. Both, you know, you know, both so, of us yeah. are avid Liverpool fans, yeah. uh, but Andy will tell you himself, this isn't going to be a Liverpool podcast. We're going to talk all things football, um, but let's talk about Liverpool Man United for a for a, for a hot off. For a hot second. For a hot second, mate. Yeah. Um, absolute snore fest. Yeah, 100%. Really poor. I mean, we were, we were, me and you were texting in the middle of it, and we both were like, you know, it, it's our third game now without a goal. Yep. It's our fourth game now without a win. Premier League game. You just don't see it anymore. And you don't see it anymore. What was the t- statistic I'd seen you today? It was the last time we'd done that was 2016 where we hadn't scored three in a row. And I think the other one was 2005. 2005, was wins, yeah, yeah. It's like 16 years ago. And I just think we, we, we were both agreeing that we what we'd seen from that match was, for me anyway, we lacked any kind of drive and intensity. Oh, mate. And I think United defended out their skin. Like, I'm not I'm not going to sit here and go, United were shite, they weren't. Like, yeah. you can't say they weren't. I watched a great, I watched a, a clip of Monday, Monday Night Football. I don't know if you watched any of Gary Neville and uh, Cara talking on Monday Night Football, but um, Gary Neville described the game as approaching a, a par four uh, shot in golf. <laughs> right, Man United were approaching the par four and they said, they'll take the par they're happy to get the par. Oh, okay. But once they've finished the hole, they've looked back and gone, if I'd have just tried a bit harder, I'd have got I'd a birdie got that. there. <laughs> that's, what, that's how Gary Neville's described it. Yeah, at the same time, I agree with, with We were Jamie happy Carragher. with a the bogey there, weren't yeah, we? Yeah, with Jamie Carragher saying the, the two midfield players had never played together, the two centre-backs were two centre-midfielders, and the front three aren't firing on all cylinders. No. Um, it was a perfect time for Man United to come and take us, I think, um, and they didn't do it. I, I I'll be honest with you. I thought they were going to win. I thought they were going to break our home record. Which I'd have, cr- I'd have cried. I would have. Like I'll, I'll let any other shit house team beat us, oh. but not United at home and break that streak. Mate. I couldn't. I couldn't honestly. Them or Everton. No, I'm not having it. Just but like, let Watford come back like they did last year. And, uh, yeah, and that was horrendous. That fuck one. them as well. <laughs> I mean, basically, I've said it'll be about any team, but there's no team I won't slander. You, you'll slander any team. Any team. Uh, have you got anything slanderous to say about Portsmouth? Portsmouth, which is like a shit team. <laughs> like honestly, they've they've dwindled so far down in the leagues now. What was it? Two thousand eight. Mate, do you remember when two thousand eight? Two thousand eight. Time for them, and he was just <laughs> banging them in, mate. Mate, two thousand eight. They'd won the FA Cup, I believe. Had they won yeah, the yeah, FA I Cup? Yeah, they did. Yeah, with Harry Redknapp. With Harry Redknapp, they got into the, they got into the Europa, didn't they? Well, they must have done if they won the FA Cup, I think. No, wait, what am I thinking? Oh, yes, they must have done. They were in the Europa the season after. Yeah. And then they just went dead shit. Well. And they've got a shit badge. <laughs> and what is this, like a half moon or something? Over like a, a star. Crest? Yeah, shit. Any team out? Shit badge. That's what you're going shit with. Shit badge. For Portsmouth. Portsmouth fans out there, shit badge. That's from Andy Roberts Portsmouth. this week. Shitmouth. Shitmouth. <laughs> Listen, I don't want. It. I mean, I doubt we're gonna have any Portsmouth Shh. fans listening. Oh well, if we do have any Portsmouth fans listening, maybe in the early stages, can only apologise. But Andy thinks your badge is shit, yeah. and your name should now be Shitmouth yeah. from now on. Listen, I, I want to say I will slander any team. Right, we'll try a, a different one next week. <laughs> Andy's Andy's slander hour. Slander hour. <laughs> slander hour for a random team. 
It's not. Uh, listen, I love football, Al. You know, I love football. Yeah. And I also love, like, people's. Okay, this is going to sound really strange. I love people's love of football. Yeah. So what I love doing is when a good friend of mine, when I first met him, he was like, oh, "I'm into football." I said, "Who do you support?" Lincoln. Lincoln. Who the fuck wakes up and supports Lincoln? Diehards. Yeah. I bet he goes away. With I England. bet. I hope he's listening to this. He will <laughs> do he as is. well. But like, so when I go, well, what the fuck do you know what I mean? But I, that's alien to us. It We've is. grown up as Liverpool fans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, we grew up, we got into a time where Liverpool weren't at their best. No, no, no. We, we, you know. Players every... like Salif Diaw, <sighs> Igor Bishkan. Well, to be fair, the only reason I loved Igor Bishkan was because he had a massive knob. <laughs> what? Hang on, hang on. Worthington Cup final. Was it 2003? I think it was. He was in the goal mouth, and I think he was adjusting his shorts. Massive knob. All right, if you, you know, if you're out there, I go, go and check for Igor Bishkan's big knob. This is a direct one too, Igor Bishkan. Okay, I just want a picture of it. You want a picture of Igor Bishkan's yeah. knob? Fuck it, why not, mate? So what? Where's this? Do you, Worthington Cup final? Yeah, he's in adjusting the, um, his knob. Cardiff St- in the Millennium Stadium. And how, well how big are we talking inches? Oh God. I don't know whether he was like, he might have been, he might have been excited. What? For being in the final of the Worthington Cup. But what, he, like he, John Flanagan when he scored against 100%. Tottenham? He just, he just horny all the time, Flano, isn't he? Mate, <laughs> he's so horny. <laughs> but, right, I'm telling you, right, who the fuck did we play? I can't even remember who we played. Think Man United. Was it Man United? No. Really? Or Birmingham? Oh, no, no, that was a couple of years later, I think. Oh, no, you could be right, actually. I think we played Birmingham in the, in the Worthington yeah, Cup. Yeah, I'm a massive fan. Anyway, right, he was in the goal mouth, obviously, defending. He adjusted his shorts out. I didn't see full cock, but I saw the imprint of it. Right, okay. And that, more than anything, is hornier. In in terms of uh, a Teasing vegetable? Me. Oh. Like, three quarters of a cucumber. F- fucking hell. It was like a veiny, triumphant bastard. <laughs> <laughs> it was. Right. I've never seen anything like it. Swiftly moving on from oh, Eagle okay. Bishkan's knob. Yeah. You watch any other footy this weekend? Everton, uh, Everton and Aston Villa got a pee. Postponed. COVID has stopped Villa playing again. At him. <clears throat> I was saying to you the other day, wasn't I? Like, with the whole COVID thing and stuff like that, I think I read somewhere within... The, the league rules, one person has to have COVID in the team. Yeah, you were saying to me last week that even like the physio, if the physio's got it. you got like the physio or something and he's got, uh, obviously he's within direct contact with the full, the full he'll squad. Be, he'll be rubbing groin. Rubbing groin. Rub, yeah, rubbing feet. Bums. Rubbing bums. Rubbing bums. Rubbing bums. <laughs> <laughs> like, who's he the physio of? Rubbing C- bums. City. City. They all have their bums rubbed. Well, speaking of City... Oh, yeah. They look fantastic, don't they? They were looked great. I said to you the other day, didn't I? I said, I thought they they are like, when they're bad, they're really bad. And the whole world goes, oh, no, the team's falling apart. But when they're really good, it's almost like it's automated for them. It's like win by, it's win by numbers. Is, I don't know. I can't explain it. But you're watching it and you're like, this is such like... It, it looks easy, does it? It just looks yeah, easy. Yeah, fun. yeah, yeah. It just looks second nature. You know when you watch... You know when you watch a singer on The Voice and you, and you just turn to the person next to you and you go, they're not even, they don't even look like they're straining. They yeah. don't even they're look like... They're not even trying. Look, at it's just coming out the mouth, that. But they they look fantastic at the moment. They looked, they looked amazing. Um, they look the stark opposite. They look fantastic. But there's something you don't like about Man City. Oh, you mean Pep Guardiola? What don't you like about Pep he's Guardiola? He's a shit dresser, Al. You think he's a scruff, don't you? He's a scruff. He looks like... He's got such a beige sense of dress. And I remember seeing him once, and he had like a pair of like smart loafers on. Gucci loafers. Probably. Because they're, into, like, he, they're he, into making you look scruffy at the moment. Have you seen them ones they released, and it just looks like a load of spunk on trainers? What, Gucci loafers? I'm not, I'm not lying. Have you seen them? <laughs> not at all, mate. I'm sure, it's, I'm sure it's Gucci. Gucci loafers look like they've been spunked on. Yeah. So <clears throat> he didn't have them on, by the way. He just had like a pair of black like dress shoes on. He had... They weren't trousers. They were defo like chinos, okay. which you can kind of get away yeah, with, yeah, yeah. right? Fine. Smart cash. And then he had a hoodie on. Oh. And it wasn't. It was like a beige. I mean, you can't wear a hoodie with loafers, can you? I thought I'm fucking sick of him. It's another team I'm slandering. <laughs> I don't. Not think the, the team, team though. Just not the his team. Dress sense. Just his dress sense. Well, if he's 
would you have him as the the worst dress manager in the Prem? Or just, just he's not the worst dress, I don't, is he? The thing is, right, I don't think you can, because most of most coaches will wear all sports gear, won't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gone on the days of, like, Arsene Wenger coming out in, like, what, like a robe? In his zip, them really his long. zip down to his shins. <laughs> you ever see that you video? stuck in it. Have you ever seen that video where he can't find his pocket? Oh, mate. <laughs> Sensational. <laughs> No, but I'd say if we're talking best dressed, who do you think? I I think I know who you're going to say. Okay, Scott Parker. Scott Parker. <laughs> yeah, he looks Scott great. Scott Parker he? is pro- like a, and you know he's a bit of a fucking geezer. He's right? he's a fucking wide. Yeah, you know I mean, he's like, right, well, I'm going to get up there. I'm going to put on my Ted Baker shirt, which has been pressed. Right, I don't do the fucking ironing, and I'm going to put my tie on with a fucking clip. And put my fucking trainers. No, trainers. My fucking trousers on. Trousers. Tie clip, and I'm gonna go out for some fucking calamari. <laughs> calamari. You can see, don't you? Even when he's looking casual, he's got a he's got a little quilted gilet on. He looks great in his quilted gilet. Uh, you know what? You can right? see him getting up. He's he's all ready. Shirts on. Shirts on. Trousers are on. Loafers. Not no hoodie. No hoodie in sight. No. You can see him going. Susan, where's the fucking gilet? Where's you my? Move your hand. The fucking gilet up. Susan, where's my fucking gilet, you bastard? I'm going out for some calamari. Do you know why I keep saying calamari, right? Because I've seen one interview with him. And where, where I think when Fulham came back into the Prem and he, t- and he took the interview air for calamari. What? Yeah. He took the fellow who was interviewing him for what? I think to do like, the interview? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was like, but it was like, it was like Sky or something. And then he just like pushed like a plate of calamari. And like, here you go. Some fucking calamari there. <laughs> And Hang a, on. And a garlic alioli. Alioli! <laughs> <laughs> Mate, hang on. He took the interviewer for calamari. What other appetizers were on? Just were on? calamari. I mean... I think Scott Parker sees it as an Lemon aphrodisi- squeeze. Yeah. He sees it as an aphrodisiac, doesn't he? Oh. Get that down, you sweetheart. Finish your calamari. Calamari. Back to mine. I'll take the <laughs> gilet off. You can see what's under yeah. this shirt. I'll show you my tie clip, then you can fuck off. I've got a big West End bench <laughs> on my chest because I fucking love the Emmers. He's yeah. a fucking hammer, isn't he? I don't know. Well, yeah, I knew he was an hammer, like, but like... He's a, he's a geezer. You can see him with all the Green Street boys. Yeah, yeah. Just S- bullying Pep in his, in his Gucci loafers and his yeah, shit. Yeah, but, but I think Pep likes it. Wearing his top that says City Zens. But... <laughs> see, that's another thing that fucking wound me up. City They're trying to brand themselves... They've got no history. They're trying to brand themselves. No, mate. City's ends is City's horrible. ends. City's ends. <laughs> Do you, have you ever been on the tram in Manchester and... and Vincent and, Company? Mate, it's this unreal, is your captain it? speaking. I was genuinely impressed with that. I, was impressed, I thought that was pretty cool. I hate the City's ends bit. Yeah. But he, I think he likes getting bullied. He, I bet he gets bullied Who in the pet? boardroom. Yeah. When he goes in to ask for another 50 bill for his defence. I was saying to this to you the other day, uh, is he spent like... Isn't he spent like something like eight hundred million? I'd have to get the figures. I think up. he spent more than that. Has he spent like nearly a billion pounds? He's got to spend. He's he's got, got to spend a billion, mate. That's a million. He million. has got he has got a bigger defence budget than some countries. <laughs> Shut up. I'm not lying to you. He really, really has. <laughs> what, Shall I Google what, it right now? What country, right? I want to know what country's going up against John Stones, Nate Diaz, right. Nate Diaz, the UFC fighter, Mendy. <laughs> Don't even get a look in Mendy anymore. And Joao <laughs> Calhalo. Right, I'm looking it up now. Whoa. All right. Like Luxembourg. Guardiola led t- uh, team. Uh, okay, so he spent about 600 million. S- 600 million pounds. On defenders. And I can guarantee you right now, Malta has got a smaller defence budget. You mess it. Yeah. 100%. Speaking of Malta, that was a great segue, that. Andy. Thank you. Because what bit's coming up next? The Maltese Premier League. <laughs> right, gang. So each week, me and Andy are going to do a little review of the week's football in Malta. Um, well, we, we wanted to choose a, a league not a lot of people knew about. True. Very true. Do you know what I mean? And I said to you the other day, well, I follow... I follow the Maltese Premier League. Yeah, yeah. Well, you holiday to Malta frequently, don't you? Very family? frequently. And I am actually one sixteenth Maltese. Are you actually? My, my nan's side. You've never told me Maltese, that. Maltese, mate. Seriously? Seriously. 
<sighs> Maltese, mate. So one sixteenth. One sixteenth. So what's that like? Great, great. Is that great, great sixteen times? Oh, well, half would be me mum. A quarter would be me dad. You don't look it. An eighth would be her, her family. Let's go one more time. <laughs> That's a sixteenth. It's honestly right. Anyone's listening in Malta, I doubt it. It's a fantastic country. I've heard. I. I. You know. I've been written too many a time asking to come home. I, but I haven't. <laughs> come home, my brother. <laughs> it's fantastic. It's got everything you want. Malta. What? what sell, sell it to me. All right. Okay. So, takes about. Oh, Christ. I think it takes about four hours to get there. Three or four hours right, to get okay. there. It's like south of Sicily. Lovely. Um, you can get a boat to Sicily. Yeah. As well. Day out. Yeah. You find, you feel like a real godfather when you go to but Sicily. But you don't want to leave, do you? You don't want to leave Malta when you get God, there. God, no. No. But you get to Malta. Uh, 17 miles long, nine miles wide. Seriously? Yeah. The whole island. Right? So it separates... Just a bit shy of Igor Bishkan's knob. <laughs> Well, apparently it's where the guy Bishkan's knob goes to on holiday. He just rests it on Malta <laughs> while he's in Italy. That's what Sicily is. <laughs> you can you can holiday to Igor Bishkan's right. knob <laughs> like an inflatable in the ocean. I thought it was a banana boat I was riding. <laughs> it was just no. Bishkan's big old knob. No, right. So Malta, yeah, yeah, um, it's part of Euro. Unlike us. Right, okay. Which still kills me. Um, and nine ma- 17 miles long, nine miles wide. Yeah. yeah. They've got their own language, so it's Maltese, the language. Yeah. So it's like a mixture of like Italian and Arabic. Unreal. Um, it's like an ancient island as well, so it's like... I've, I've heard it's, there's ruins. There's all kinds of ruins there. There's, like, there's also 365 churches on the island, one for each day. What? Yeah. 365 churches. One for each day of the well, year. Well, they're quite dim. What do they do on the leap year? Oh. How many there? days are there in the leap year? Do they just go to Rigo Bishkan's knob for that day? <laughs> <laughs> praise praise be to tell- Rigo. <clears throat> I'm telling you, and then, best of all, and I would love for them to, to sponsor as well, I doubt they would, they've got their own beer. Chisk Lager Beer. Chisk Lager. C-I-S-K. And it's it's crisp. And it's Chisk. Oh, man. It is called a lager beer. We did want it to sponsor the <coughs> podcast, didn't we? But unfortunately, this podcast is sponsored by Ham Spam and Steve Cram. Just, it's just ham. Like, we, because we All love ham. Of ham. <laughs> gammon. All, gammon, yeah. Uh, uh, just a, just a thick And is, ham. was it anything pork bacon. related? Yeah, bacon. Sausages. Sausages. Ribs. Ribs. For lunch. I, lo- <laughs> I, I do love a rib. For lunch. Low ribs. Um, so, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, so, anyone who is thinking about going on holiday, go to Malta. But, we've all been, we've all been, um, well, I've been following the Maltese Premier League, so I got you in on the Maltese you Premier did, League. You did, you did, so we've both picked a team <coughs> that we're going to follow each week. Um, my team, uh, it's very similar to the famous Scottish side, the Hibernians. They Ooh. are sitting second in the table currently, and their lead scorer, Andre Agassi, not the tennis player, and he's also called Andre Agius. Andre Agius scored in a one nil win at the weekend to keep them in second place. Well, mine, <clears throat> I've gone for the capital. You have? I've gone for Valletta FC. Valletta FC. Um, which usually do really well, but they're dwindling in the ninth at the moment on 20 points. Well, like, but, like everyone's saying, it's a strange season for everyone. But I will say they've got two games in hand. Two games in hand. And if I'm right in, if I'm right in thinking... Like, most of the games is played in their national stadium. Oh, Valletta's is? Mm, no, no, at all teams. What, every game is in like the same most, stadium? Like, most of them are, yeah, because there's not that many going on. What? Yeah. What's... And last week, there was six red cards. It's a vicious league. It's a vicious league. <laughs> it is an absolutely vicious league. <laughs> so, so, my team, Hibernians, the Scots, they're sitting in second. After 10 games played, they've drawn to... Sorry, after 15 games, they've won 10, drawn two, lost three. And Andy's Valletta are, uh, have played 13 games, so two games in hand. Won five, drawn five, lost three. So 20 points for Valletta, 32 for Hibernian. 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 Yeah. They, they're, they've got a badge of William Wallace, Hibernian, <laughs> which is weird. <laughs> uh, my Valletta's is so regal, because Valletta is the capital. What's Valletta's um, 
Any any decent players for Valletta? No. Not no. know any of them? No. I just look at the scores, though. Well, I've just Cause I've we used got to, Andrea, yeah. I get, Listen, I we used to get we used to be able to get the highlights on YouTube. But that stopped. Really? Yeah. I don't know why. It's because it's all in the same stadium. Yeah. But what I do love about Malta is, is like, it is that fine mix of like people go and play footy for their team, but they've still got like a regular job. Yeah. Remember yeah, when yeah. we played Havisham Water like the Liverpool? Yeah. We played Havisham Waterloo or something. Well, it's similar called. to the Marine game last week. Yeah, 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 yeah. Tottenham. But like their Havisham, it was like an FA Cup game or something mad like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And their centre four, no, was their centre back was a bin man. Was he? Yeah, I'm not saying that's like a, a shit house job or not. I'm just saying you had salt of the earth fellas, and then he turned up at Anfield. To, to salt of the earth. Yeah, Speaking, be... one of them was a gritter as well, wasn't he? <laughs> Speaking of salt of the earth, he gritted. He gritted outside before anyone got in. He, he used to grit Eagle Bishkan's knob. <sighs> Big knobs. Yeah, I've set that in your mind now. Andy, I've got a quick question for you. I'm really interested in, you know, um, with with COVID coming about, people having to rethink career choices and things like that. Um, I want to know which football yeah. manager yeah. you think you mean, could yeah. manage <clears throat> somewhere else, right? Do you know what I mean? So I want to know, like, um, which football manager do you think would be best at managing, let's say, uh, a, a dog groomer. That's a tough one, that. Because they could all on their own merit, they they, they could all on their own merit run tough a dog one. groomers. The question would be, who couldn't run a dog groomers? Like, you couldn't have Sean Dyche do it because you think he is a dog. So, all right. Come That's all going to come in. I've <laughs> trimmed your Alsatian. Hold <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Right, the thing is, right. I've taken your Alsatian and I've put it on the buffet table. Which, right, right. I want to know from you, which football manager do you think could manage a Toby Carvery? Oh, come on, Al. That's dead easy. You Who know it? it's dead easy. It's fucking Bisto Bum. Bisto Bum himself. Yeah. Fucking chippy tits. Big Sam. Big Sam. You reckon Big right, Sam's get in manager? Here. Yeah, yeah. Right, get in here. What you have? I'll, 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 I'm coming with my family, right? It's a Sunday afternoon. Are you ringing, Mom... are you ringing to book? You've got to ring no, to I'm, book. I'm, it's I'm, a Sunday. No, we're walking in. We're just chancing it. You're walking? Yeah, okay. we're just well, chancing gonna, it. Well, that's going to show in the... Go on, go on. We'll, we'll, see, we'll see how we get on. But right. my mum's decided that she she can't be asked cooking a roast on the Sunday. So okay. we're going to Toby Carvery. Yeah? Right, okay. Fire away. Uh, hiya, you all right? Hiya! <laughs> um, you all right? Uh, any chance of a table for four? You're taking a foot. Have you got a reservation? Uh, t- sorry, just a walk-in, mate. We haven't You're got taking a... a fucking piss, aren't you? As if you could just walk into here and ask for a table on four. On a Sunday, when you know we haven't got any gravy left, because I've drank the lot. <laughs> right, okay. I- I'm really sorry that we haven't got... My, the boot of my car is just full of turkey bones. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, we haven't got a reservation, really sorry. Uh, you, and you, the... What? What do you want to do? Just put your roast in a bowl and feed it to you out back like a fucking dog. Well... Actually, t- give me a, give me a sec, give me a sec. I'll go. Hang on, hang on. Shut up, you, you bitch. I'll let me go. Let me go and s- talk to this table. Hang on. Have you finished with your? Have you finished with your food? Well, fucking hurry up. I, hey, hey, don't scrape that plate. I want to fucking drink it in a bit. <laughs> right, hurry up, get out. Fifteen minutes for your table. How's that sound? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. We'll we'll take a seat at the bar. I'll get a couple of J twenties. Yeah, we'll you take that. Right, go to the bar <laughs> and ask for four Oxo cubes and a pint glass with some warm water and get the fuck out my sight. Oh, uh, just a couple of questions. Just a couple of dietary questions. Um, yeah. Two of them are two of them are vegetarian. They'd be nut roasts. Right, we'll go and eat some fucking soil outside. You're in a Toby Carvery, you daft melt. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so so that's a 
You've not got any nut roasts left. I'll tell you what, no, we haven't got any nut roasts. We only got any vegetarian shite. If you want that, I'll just bring out a bowl of fresh air for you, you fucking hippie. <laughs> I, um, I, you know, that's quite... It's quite offensive, that, if I'm honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. listen, how much longer are you going to keep me here? Because I want to go back in the kitchen and suck a carcass clean. Um, can I just... Sorry, can I take your name, please? Because I think you've been very rude and your customer service has been uh, atrocious. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, just write Big Sam, Big Sam, from the Toby Carvery, Wigan, right next to the JJB Stadium. Right, gang, so each week we've decided we're going to set each other a little task and have a little game, uh, and we're going to pick a -a five-a-side team of the week with a little twist. Um, So this week we've set ourselves a little task of picking a -a five-a-side team of the week with silly names. Now, these are... X players with silly names, and some of them are true, some of them are false. Uh, Andy's not seen my list, and I've not seen Andy's list, and he's got to guess which of mine are true, which are false, and I've got to do the same with him. Uh, Andy, do you want to go first, or shall we do one player each? Oh, oh, let's do one player each. All right, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, I'll go first. Go on, my one. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, in goal, I've got. A player who played, he got 36 caps for East Germany. That's me clue. Okay. And his name is Ralph Minge. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's true. You think he's true? I think that's I think that's a real player. Because I think, I, I am fairly certain Minge is quite a, it's quite a common second name in Germany. Minge. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to say yes, that's true. It's true. Yes. It's true, he's got it. Okay. On to you. All um, right. We've got to try our best not to laugh here because these are actually people's names. All right. Argentinian goalkeeper. Okay. 34 years of age. Yeah. No caps. Fabian Assman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate. I just know you'll love that one as well. <laughs> Fabian Assman. Fabian Assman. I'm going to say it's true. It is true. It's true. <laughs> Fabian Asman, the Argentinian goalie with no caps. I wonder why he's got no caps, eh? Do you think it's because he's called Asman? I think it is. I think they've they've gone, should we get Fabian in? No, we can't have Asman on the back Ass- of our national shirt. Asman. Mate, you, know what I'm, you know what I'd really like to know? If he's, if he's a legs man. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? The what, irony of that. What is do like, you prefer, mate? I don't like ass. I prefer legs. <laughs> a poor fellow. It's stuck in his name. <laughs> Right, my second player, he's, he's sitting at the back of my five-a-side team. Right. He's defending, but he's got an eye. He's got an eye for goal. Okay. And sometimes he bursts forward. Okay. Right? He played right back for Motherwell, professionally, but he's he's sitting in the middle for me in my team. Okay. And his name is Dixie Normus. <laughs> That's got to be a wind-up. His name is Dixie, like, like the famous Dixie Dean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dixie Normus. No, not having it. You're not having that no. as a real name. No, not having it. Right, okay. Yeah, you're right. It's <laughs> false. <laughs> Dixie Normus. You wouldn't last two seconds in Scotland. Dixie Normus from Motherwell. Right back from Motherwell. Fucking do you know hell. Think, do you not, can you not see him darting down the line, put whipping a cross in? Mm, kind of. It's Normus. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me give you mine. Right, two caps for Switzerland. Okay. Andre Muff. Andre Muff? Andre Muff. Muff. And he's Swiss. Swiss. So that could that could mean, uh, like, what kind of Swiss is he? He could be Swiss Swiss. He could be German Swiss. He could, could be, be Italian s- Swiss. We Swiss cheese. It, pff, well, with a name like Muff. Andre Muff. Andre Muff. I'm going to go for true oh. Muff. It is true. Right. <laughs> you know what they say? I know my muff. <laughs> and his name is Andre. Andre Muff. Yeah, Andre Muff. Muff. Be confused with Andre three thousand. I often, I did because there was. I was really scared. At one, we haven't come across ones the same yet. No, no, no. Which is true. We, we, which I've is good. got a couple of subs just in case we oh, do that. Okay. Oh, go on then. Go on then. Okay. I've got how many have I got? Hang on a sec. I know it's a five aside. Just oh no, we're all right. I've got five. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go on. 
Right, my third player, he's a box to box midfielder. Uh, he got sent off against England. Yeah. What year? In uh, 1982. 82? <laughs> yeah. And my player is called Burnt Arse. That's true. It's Burnt- got to be. <laughs> he's called Burnt Arse. Was it, where's, who's he play for? He uh, plays for England. No. no, no, he got sent off against England. I think I think he's Swiss. Fucking hell, what's with all the Swiss? I think it's true. It's true. Yes. Burnt arse is true. Okay, brilliant. All right, okay. My one. Um, didn't make the first team, so he was a he was a Wigan reserve team player. Wigan reserve team player. Danger Tuppence. <laughs> Danger Tuppence. Danger Tuppence. <laughs> Danger Tuppence. <laughs> Whose first name's Danger? Danger Tuppence. I'm saying that's true. That's a mad first name, but I'm going with true. It's false, Al. Oh, fuck it. <laughs> Danger Tuppence. Danger Tuppence. Where have you thought of that name? I know, like, I think it's like Nigeria. They have, like, really, like, unique first names. Yeah. So a lot of people are called, like, names you wouldn't... It's just people, like, called, like, Christmas over there and stuff like yeah. that, isn't it? So, and one of my favourite words, as you know, is Tuppence. <laughs> So I'll put them as danger tuppence. Danger tuppence, obviously. <laughs> how can I? How can I forget? <laughs> right, next one. I think you're going to really enjoy this one. <clears throat> okay. He's the he's the very assistant manager, but he had a playing career. Mm. Yeah, and he's called Peter Shirtlifter. No, he's called Peter Shirtlifter, and he was the he's the very Bury Bury assistant manager, Peter Shirtlifter. I'm going to say that's false. You're right. You yes. are correct. However, oh. the Bury assistant manager is called Peter Shirtlift. You are taking the piss. But I've just added the air on the end to call him a shirtlifter. You mean he lives in Bury? Bury. And he's called Peter Shirtlift. Shirtlift. Shirtlift, yeah. And apparently, he, after oh he gave his shoes off his tits to the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> and they have to go, Peter, fucking get in here. Peter. Stop fucking hell, Peter. By your second name, for God's sake. All right, okay, here we go. Okay, so MLS. MLS player. He played, for the, um, he played for the San Jose Earthquakes. Good team. David Breasts. <laughs> no way, mate. <laughs> no fucking way, David, David Breasts. David Breasts. Yeah. Can you believe that? Breasts. David Breasts, not, not Breast. Breast. Breasts. Breasts. Yeah. Dave Breasts. David. I think he hates Dave. He hates Dave. Yeah. I mean, he hates... Well, there's other things... Did you go out last night? No. Who with? Dave. Yeah. Don't call him Dave. He hates it. Dave, Dave Breasts. No, David Breasts. What? His nickname, is his nickname like... I was... Davey Tits. <laughs> he hates it, Al. You know he does. It's just like... Honestly, he thinks... I've got a weird second name as it is. You might as well just full name me. And, you know, he plays for San Jose Earthquakes, David Breasts. I'm saying false. Yeah, it's false. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, and whenever I was thinking of names, I'd try and Google them to see if they were real. <laughs> you know, just on the off chance. Just if there is a person. I really wanted this. Danger Tuppence to be real. Wait, what a name. Danger Tuppence. <laughs> I think that should be your podcast name from now on. Danger Tuppence. Right, my final player, Andy. Oh, wait, go on. True or false? Yeah. Your clue is he signed for PSV in 2008. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And my final player of my five-a-side team, he sticks them away every week, is called <laughs> Fuck My Az. He's called... <laughs> I'll say it again for you. Okay. Fuck. <clears throat> F-O-C-H. Right. Fuck. And I don't know whether it's pronounced me as or my as. Fuck me as. Fuck my as. Can you fuck my as? Can you use it in a sentence, please? Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> has anyone seen fuck my as this week? What nationality is he? Is he Dutch? You no, know, he's actually Uruguayan. My as. Fuck my as. Uh, I think that's true. True. Yeah. Go with true for fuck my as. Fuck my as. 
It's false, man. Oh, it's false. Fog my ass. Fog my ass. I really wanted him to be true. Yeah, I, me too. He, he sounds like a, you know what I mean? Like, Great oh, guy. you look rough this morning. Yeah, I was out with fog my ass. Oh, fog my ass. Oh, fuck. Yeah, don't, don't, don't say it around him, though. He gets a bit. He's good mates with fog He's temperamental me. with fog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. His cousin's with fog, fog my gob. <laughs> Oh, right. God. Well done, Al. That was a good one, that. I'm going to give you my last one. He's an Algerian centre-back. Yeah. Hey, no caps, again. Arse bandit. Shut the fuck up. Arse bandit. A-R-S. Yeah. Space. Bandit. B-A-N-D-E-T. Got to be false. It's true, Al. Shut up, it's true. Ars Bandit. Ars Bandit. Algerian, check it out. Algerian centre-back. No caps. No caps. Why do you think that is? Well, similar to Ars Mad. <laughs> Ars I, Bandit. Ars, Ars B- Bandit. Check it out. <laughs> Ars Bandit. <laughs> Listen, fog my ass and ass bandit. bandit sound like a great night out. Yeah, yeah. Although danger tuppence, danger tuppence. Mate. Do you know what I'm really? Do you know what I really googled hard for? What David Breasts? <laughs> <laughs> I really, really. It sounds too much like David Brent for me. That's all I keep thinking of. I know. I really pushed it through. I was like, David I need for him to be true. I can't even find anyone with the second name Breasts. <laughs> what about Breast? The just no, yeah. not plural. No, mate. That is. There's some great names in there. I like it. Should we? I think we should keep doing this. Yeah, funny names. Should we do like side. funny names? For like, yeah, funny names or like, um, we could choose like a different topic each week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then have them as our five side. Different category. <clears throat> well, listen. If you have any silly names or funny names, and you want to send Ooh, yeah, them yeah, in yeah. to be in our in our five side team, just drop us a little message. Yeah. And we'll make sure to mention them next week. Or just let us know what your favourite one was, because mine was Fuck My Ass. Well, we could, I'll tell you what we could do. Uh, get everyone to send in to us their five aside with rude football names. Yeah. And we can pick and we'll release it. five of the best. Five of the best. And we'll mention you. A hundred percent. I had a couple of others. Oh. Uh, uh, she's won the Women's World Cup with USA. Anita Hardcock. That's got to be true. Anita Hardcock. I reckon that's true. It's false. No. Yeah, Anita Hardcock. It sounds Anita so pl- Hardcock. It sounds so plorable. Anita plorable? Hardcock. No, plausible. Anita Stiff Drink. Oh, God. What is that? Another one. Anita Stiff Drink. Anita Stiff Drink. You see, I could say that's true, though, because we got Danny Drinkwater. That's true. It's but false, it's not isn't it? Anita Drink. Fucking hell. I feel like I've done by you. I had that, and my other one was Rod Fanny. Yeah, it's true. It is true. It is true. He plays for Montreal in the MLS. Yeah. Plays centre back. Canada. Rod Fanny. <laughs> Great guy. Where's he from? He's not Canadian, don't surely. Know. Don't know. Uh, He's got a silly name though. He's got a very silly name. It's a very good name. Fun I was I was about to slander Montreal then, but I've got nothing on them yet. <laughs> <laughs> right, I think that's it, Andy, isn't it? That was an experience, wasn't it? I've re- I've really Really quite enjoyed that, if I'm honest, mate. I've loved it. Like, really, really loved it. I think we, we first thought of doing this to mainly entertain ourselves, but yeah, I yeah. think it's going to entertain other people, definitely. I think, I think some people will enjoy it, some people will hate it. Yeah, some people will despise it. I think it'll thrill people mentally, physically, physically sexually, emotionally. emotionally, the final one. But yeah, I've had loads of fun, mate. I say um, to those who don't like it, that's fuck off. Just a swift fuck <laughs> off. <laughs> and I'll slant, right. and I'll get, and, the, and I'll tell you what they can do, Al, right? They can send their name in, yeah, over Twitter or Instagram, yeah? And I'll I'll throw them in on Slander Hour. Next week, Slander Hour. Yeah, so yeah. Portsmouth fans are already in the bin. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Why Why don't you like Portsmouth again? Shit, shit team. Shitmouth. Shit mouth. Shit mouth. Shit badge. Their only saving grace was 2008, which I've already forgotten about. Well, the the, the Diara years are behind them. <laughs> but, right, and if anyone goes, ah, oh, this is shit, 
send your name in, yeah, and I'll get you on Slander Hour as well. Well, I, th- I think he's pretty serious about that, everyone. So if you <laughs> have any issues with what Andy has said today, please send us a direct message, uh, and I'm sure we'll get back to you. And I think what he said he's going to say is fuck off. Um, but thanks for tuning in. It's really helped me and Andy. Yeah, we, we're both sort of lost for what to do at the moment, like we said, with, with, with lockdown 3.0 upon us. Yeah. Um, but we've really enjoyed it. We've loved it. And all, like, all jokes aside, I think we're finding it very cathartic, aren't we, to be able to talk. And we can talk about football, we can talk about silly things, but I think it's vastly important we catch up. We talk every, we talk literally every single day. We do, we do. But I can't remember the last time I went, ah. Oh, how you feeling now? Like, do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, no, yeah. Not even like a funny sense, like like in a serious sense. So we aim that to be the case here in this podcast. It's I hate to use the word, but it's a little bit of a safe space for us all. It's definitely a safe space for us, um, and we've we've been blessed to speak to each other all day and have a laugh. Yeah. Um, and we've been blessed to be joined by all of you. <laughs> we love you. We do. Right. See you next week. Love you. See you, everyone.